we've been on quite the journey at HACO. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the company more as, as Temco Aviation. We are an MRO, so it's a maintenance, repair, and overhaul facility. We founded the company uh, 25 years ago there in Greensboro, and we do scheduled heavy maintenance on commercial and military aircraft. Um, we since have expanded the company into manufacturing and engineering integration. Uh, we're in the seating, labs, galleys, anything on the interior of the aircraft, uh, we, we can make that. And then being in the maintenance business, we can install it and certify it for the FAA and maintain it for its lifetime. Greensboro is our headquarters. That's where we have a little over 600,000 square feet of maintenance uh, space there. And um, that's also where part of our manufacturing and our engineering is. And then uh, throughout the U.S., this is what we look like. We have 1,800 employees approximately in North Carolina. Uh, that number's growing. And then we have about 3,000 employees throughout the U.S. If I could step back a little bit now and tell you a, a bit about our journey. Uh, coming out of the Great Recession, aviation had a dip, as everyone did, but it, it wasn't annihilated, but we had a dip, but we came out really hot and fast. And traditionally, where we get employees from were from airlines. Well, the problem with that at this point in time is that airlines no longer are doing maintenance, so we, we couldn't depend on that. Uh, secondly, out of the military, well, back then we had been at war for eight years, no one was coming out of the military. And thirdly, it's from community colleges, specifically GTCC uh, here in North Carolina. They've got a great aviation program. Um, so our first two veins were drying up or dried up. Our third vein we were looking at going, hmm. We had come to the conclusion that when we hire someone coming out of the community college, they had their license from the FAA, and that to us meant they were ready to be trained and learn. They would have to work with somebody for two years, basically, before they could be productive, where we could just turn them loose on an aircraft. But looking at, at what our needs were in the future, looking at that's what we were really going to have to depend on for our workforce, we quickly decided that that was not sustainable. So we, we also have an aviation council uh, in, in the triad, and in, in meeting with them, and I, I know them you know, from the industry, and, and they were having the same problems. They were like, we don't know what we're going to do. We cannot find qualified, certified people that have the training, that can pass a drug test, another big problem we have. Um, and, and so we, as, as an aviation council, we decided to take on this workforce issue. Now, there wasn't a one of us who had a clue what we were talking about. We uh, went to uh, the community college. They uh, were eager, obviously, to, to let us in and work with us and help us. Um, but what we pretty quickly discovered, what we were getting out of the system, it wasn't a community college problem. It wasn't what they were teaching, the curriculum, or lack thereof. It was what was coming into the system. The students that they were getting were not ready to learn what they needed to learn. <coughs> Subsequently, there were a number of things that, that the college just simply wasn't teaching because the kids couldn't understand it. They couldn't get it. They couldn't progress them. And so that's when we went, uh-oh, we, we've got a bigger problem. So that's when we then uh, started looking at high schools. You know, what can we do in high school to better prepare students to be ready to go into a career and, and learn what they need to learn to be in aviation? We were fortunate that there was a high school that had started an aviation program, but in the beginning of this high school, they were strictly focused on pilots, piloting, which is a, again a need. There's a shortage of pilots as well. But on the inside of the school was a aviation school. And so we started working with them to better understand how could we get into other areas of aviation, particularly the ones that the aviation companies around the airport were really needing. So it's Honda Jet, Cessna, FedEx. It's really a growing cluster of aviation schools around the airport there. So we were able to create a, a number of different pathways 
and aviation in this school so they could continue with the piloting. But we opened up these others, airframe and power plant mechanic, and that's really what us and Honda and Cessna need the most. Avionics, technicians, engineering, aerospace simulation, and airport management. So that's what we then kind of started to work with the school to build these programs. But it is painfully slow. It's not a quick fix. Uh, so basically now what we're down to is we're now recruiting in the middle school for our employees. And that's a heck of a lead time. So started out uh, here, the Dr. Waters thinks uh, that anybody who's going to be in aviation, they ought to know how to fly. Now, they don't necessarily get their lessons, but uh, there's enough simulators there in which she can teach them all the basics of flight. So they know exactly what they're working on and how to do that. Then we really wanted to get to know the students, uh, not just train them in high school and, and hope we're happy with what comes out the other end. We wanted to get to know them, but we didn't know how to do that. And we were real fortunate that Junior Achievement uh, had a job shadowing program that they were interested in starting and seeing if, if they could get in the job shadowing business. Well, it sound, seemed like a perfect match for us, and so they did. So every year we have 10 students. They have a five-week job shadowing opportunity. Um, junior Achievement is, is the glue in between the school and the industry. And so they set up and make sure that the company has plans for the student for the day. And, and Junior Achievement works with the school to make sure that they've got the right students that should go to that particular industry or that particular company. Uh, they report to school. They then take a white bus to Haco or to Honda or Cessna and they spend the day with us. Uh, junior Achievement is there to greet them, make sure they get the proper handoff to where they're going in the facilities that day. They come back together for lunch, and Junior Achievement brings a lunch in like this, and they have a lunch and learn, work on soft skills each week, uh, some type of lessons from everything from business ethics to, to how to have a, a business meal, uh, and to really kind of start to assimilate them into those soft skills they're going to need as, as they continue their, their working career. In the 10th grade, they do tours of all the different aviation companies. In the 11th grade, they have the job shadowing. And then in the 12th grade, there's an internship. The internship is paid. And one of the things that we, we learned along the way was that uh, we told HR that we were hiring these high school students to come have a paid internship. The lawyers quickly threw the flag on that. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. it's a dangerous environment here. You know, we're, we're lifting jets up off the ground. They're full of aviation fuel. And so we were fortunate enough to be able to work through NC Works in Guilford County. And what happens is they are, they are actually on NC Works payroll. They're on their insurance. They're on their Social Security. They, they do all the administration piece for us. And all we do are just let the students into the facilities and start to work with them. It is so exciting to see these young students start to grow as, as they go through this, this two-year process. Now, when they finish their junior year, so junior year is job shadowing, they have then completed all the requirements of North Carolina. They could actually graduate high school. But their senior year, they do the paid internship and they co-enroll at GTCC. So if they're involved in school, athletics, clubs, what have you, they still participate through that. They walk across the stage uh, with their graduating class, but they're halfway to their associate's degree and they're halfway to their certification. So we don't hire them then. But we decided we're not going to hire anyone until they actually pass, get their associate's degree and their certification. And that's, that's been working well. but. The, the, the real ROI on this is that what we're seeing when we hire these students, remember that two years that it took us? We're down to two months now. Because those students, they've been there for two years. We've gotten to know them, they know us. The night before they start their job shadowing, we bring in their parents uh, or, or guardian, what have you, have a dinner, 
talk to them about the dangerous work environment that they're headed into, what they're gonna be doing every day. We tour the facility and, and, and it never fails. Every time one of the new students walk up, you saw five of them there. They, hey, Kip Blakely, welcome to HACO. We're so glad to have you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the mom will reach over and go, you know, they'll kind of raise their head. You can almost see their lips moving in their eyes at that point. You know, they just, they don't know what to do, right? They're, they're nervous. And, and uh, by the end of that five weeks, without fail, I'll be walking around the facility and I'll see where I'll be, hey, Mr. Blakely, can't wait to come back and be an intern next year. And then by the time they do come back and intern, you'll see them around the facility and you can't tell who's the student and who's the regular worker. I mean, they are in the middle of their teams, they're working, they're right there on the aircraft or what we call off wing, working on something. So when we hire them, they're 19, uh, we like two or three more months, they have no educational debt, they've got a career, they've got uh, insurance, a matched 401k, they make over $30,000 a year, and we put them on a path to where by the time they're 25, they'll be making over 50. So a couple of things that we have discovered from that that are really great. We haven't lost a single one of them yet. They haven't taken another job. We haven't lost one to a drug test. And we really think that is a part of being around the employees in the industry. They know, you know, we start talking to them about making smart choices. You know, make good decisions. You've got a real opportunity here to do something for you and your family. Don't blow it. You saw Simula Foundation, others, uh, Golden Leaf. This is a great money raising opportunity from foundation, community leaders. You know, what do you need to make something like this stand up and go? Uh, the city of Greensboro, the city of Greensboro actually put in $75,000 into workforce <laughs> development to uh, do the intern program. So there's money out there if, if you're looking for that. Some of the other outcomes, great GPA average, that's over a point better than the school that they're housed in, the 3.3. 24% are female. That's actually a great number. We have a very serious problem with getting females in aviation. The other one that's such a great number is 40% are African American males in the triad, that 40% represents about what the unemployment rate is for African American males as well. So it's a great way for them to get into a, a career and a lifestyle. 80% are minority. Most students attend GTCC or take AP classes. They are at a 100% graduation rate right now. All graduates are either in the university, college, military, employed, or a combination thereof. Now, Dr. Waters worked her tail off to get 50 students in that ninth grade class every year because she just won't let anybody in. She's got standards and, and will only accept students that she feels are really committed and have the ability, capability to be there. So every year it was a struggle to fill up those 50 seats. P44 one year, 46 the next year, 45. Don't lose many, lose about 10% family moves away, decide it's not for them. She's kicked a number of them out. Um, but so we get a pretty good attrition rate through there. But after the students and parents and teachers seeing how these students really are getting these opportunities to work and they really are stepping into a career, Dr. Waters decided to open this year's class to 100. She's got a waiting list. Filled the hundred just like that. So the program is incredibly successful. Uh, we've learned some great lessons along the way on how to do something like this. Uh, but the most important ones are that business has to be at the table. You, you've got to be able to open up your doors and let the community college know what it is you need, what you want. Community college system has got to be there to understand it and, and verify that they're getting what they need, that, that the business is. And then obviously you've, you've got to have the high school there as well so that 
and making sure that we're teaching the right things with the right messages in high school to step them into the community college to get them right into work.